Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Want to give you guys a heads up on some notable titles that look to be coming back to Steam that were formerly Games for Windows Live titles or had connections to Games for Windows Live, but it looks like Capcom is updating some of their games to bring them back to Steam. On top of that... One of the most random but yet awesome game announcements has just dropped in Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. I love the Like a Dragon series, the Yakuza series, but uh, this game is so zany, so off the wall, and guess what? It's right up my alley, so we'll talk that in a little bit, have some new details as far as that's concerned. But right off the top, it looks like according to the Steam database, several games for Windows Live titles by Capcom are now submitting new versions of the games that are going to relist the titles. Now, uh, this includes Street Fighter X Tekken, Lost Planet 2, and Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. All of these games were previously pulled from Steam. They also do note Street Fighter 4 Ultra Edition, but that's still available on Steam. That never got pulled by the looks of it. However, Lost Planet 2, no longer buyable on Steam. A Street Fighter X Tekken, no longer buyable on Steam, and I don't believe Operation Raccoon City is either. But really, who's trying to check out Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City? Probably not that many people. That game came out all the way back in 2012. Yeah, that's a bit of a throwback to say the least, but uh, Street Fighter X Tekken and Lost Planet 2 coming back, that's pretty notable, all things considered. Lost Planet 2 wasn't this incredibly well-received game, but uh, I remember having some fun with it. Uh, I played the original Lost Planet like way, way, way back in the day as well, but Lost Planet 2, you fought some pretty gargantuan creatures as well, but uh, yeah, the game has not been available on Steam. They also do note that the uh, Steam database pages has been uploaded with higher quality images for their game logos, library banners, and store artwork on Steam, probably meaning that, yes, the games are going to get listed back on Steam. Street Fighter X Tekken was a pretty cool game as well. A crossover between Street Fighter and Tekken. Um, I believe they were going to do Tekken X Street Fighter as well. That would have adopted more of the Tekken gameplay style, but that never, unfortunately, came to fruition. But always a bummer whenever these games get pulled from Steam. So now, you know, having these games back, or at least potentially come back, is always a great thing. I do still long for the day that uh, Transformers, War for Cybertron, and Fall of Cybertron come back, but this is a much easier impl uh, implementation than licensing issues. Licensing issues is, like, it's pretty difficult to overcome that and bring those games back. This was a case of uh, restoring the game without games for Windows Live, and that just generally seems fairly doable. In the case of licensing issues, there's all these other parties involved, which makes it quite a bit more difficult, so it is what it is, but hopefully we see a lot of those games come back as well. I believe, isn't Fable 3 one of the big ones that because of its, yeah, Fable 3 is no longer available on Steam because of its Games for Windows Live tie-in, um, and that's a pretty notable game. It's no Fable 2, which by the way, Microsoft, get on getting uh, Fable 2 onto Steam and PC and, you know, remastered on Xbox, that would be a huge addition, but, uh, you know, the Games for Windows Live thing was something that Microsoft tried to pop off with a while ago, and that was more so their first foray uh, into, like, the PC storefronts and whatnot, and uh, yeah, let's just be honest, that never worked out. People were not gonna pay for Xbox Live Gold, and uh, even back then, this is, we're talking a little bit before my time really being into PC gaming, but if we're talking, you know, 2007, 2008, that's just not really gonna fly, and uh, nowadays, you know, Games for Windows Live, really not a big deal, but hopefully Lost Planet 2 and Street Fighter X Tekken come back on Steam here fairly shortly. All right, moving on from that, how about some incredibly exciting news? RGG has become one of my favorite studios in all of gaming. They are just so consistent, and one of my ma major complaints with gaming these days is the fact that these games take so long to develop for, uh, and I'm not saying we gotta speed up the development cycles across the board. Look, these games are getting bigger and bigger, and five years, seven years is just what it's gonna take. However, RGG has found a formula that, in the context of what they do, really, really works. Now, Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii has been revealed. It is a game starring Goro Majima, uh, an iconic Yakuza character and a beloved character within the franchise, and him finally getting his standalone game. I think people have been waiting for this for a while, but a little bit different and a little bit wacky as he uh, comes ashore, and he doesn't have any of his memories in the game throughout. You try to uh, He tries to piece together his life. The combat looks absolutely awesome, and uh, yeah, the game just looks great. Uh, and it's out February of next year, so think about this for a second. Last 
last year in 2023, RGG put out uh, Like a Dragon Ishin, the remake. They put out Like a Dragon, the man who erased his name. And just earlier this year in January, they put out Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Um, and now a year after that, they're doing Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. That's over the course of two years. They've put out like four games. That is absolutely insane. And yes, a big reason that uh, RGG can do this is it's a lot of reusing the assets, but... Uh, I have no problem with doing that. Look at a franchise like Spider-Man. Uh, like, reuse the assets. Reuse a lot of the mechanics. If that speeds up game development, why not? That's not a big deal. If you can still continue to tell compelling stories within that city, within that world, and you can reuse that world, great. I have no problem with that. Do, am I saying every studio, every developer can afford to do that and uh, things not getting stale? No. But with, in the case of RGG, I feel like they do it in a very, very good way. Now, like a Dragon Pirate Yaku, in Hawaii is going to not be as big as Infinite Wealth, of course, but it is going to be bigger than Like a Dragon Guide and the Man Who Erased His Name because they noted that the story is about 1.3 to 1.5 times larger. Like a Dragon, the Man Who Erased His Name, uh, on how long to beat clocks in at like 13 hours, a little bit longer if you want to do everything, but if we're talking 1.5 of 13 hours, that gets us pretty close to 20 hours. 20 hours, you know, 17 to 20 hours for a main story playthrough, I'm all about that for Like a Dragon Pirate Yacht in Hawaii. Like, Infinite Wealth was great. However, that game was incredibly, incredibly lengthy, and it's not like I want to play that style of game all the time. It's great, and I'm sure RGG is going to do another title like that. That, obviously, a game like that takes a lot more time in the oven, and uh, they're probably still working on the next mainline Like a Dragon title, but as these Bridge the Gap kind of games with Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Smaller scale games, reusing a lot of the world, and, uh, you know, just giving players uh, a more titles to check out and get more familiarized with the world. I just think it's great. I, I think this is something more developers should do. Insomniac does it fairly well, where they release Spider-Man 2018, and then they drop Miles Morales just two years after that. I think it'll keep consistent game releases going, and if you can do it in a way where you're reusing the world, but you're still offering new and compelling content at the same time, like, it's a happy medium. You can't obviously just keep re-releasing the same games, but, I mean, sports games have been doing that for how long? And that's been, uh, you know, sports games have been incredibly successful. And even, you know, RGG talked about the fact that they're a little surprised that uh, with a lot of other developers and publishers, like a Rockstar, for example, they're they're uh, basically rebooting the game. And with GTA, you kind of have to do that, but you're rebooting the game in sense of new characters, uh, new world, new city, new uh, gameplay elements, so on and so forth. And new gameplay elements are going to be introduced in Pirate Yakuza, given that, you know, my boy's got a cutlass with him. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a little over the top, but I think a lot of studios can learn a little bit about Pirate Yakuza, yeah uh, from RGG, excuse me. Um, but I'm not saying every studio has to go this route, but for RGG, it really works. But that is going to do it for me. Again, it looks like some major Major Capcom titles are going to be coming back to Steam and uh, Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. That, incredibly excited for that, dropping in February of next year. That's going to do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting, but as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.